Good afternoon, Redeemer family, and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our psalm for this week. This week is the last week in the church year, and it will be Christ the King Sunday, the other name for the last Sunday of the church year. And so we focus on Psalm 93 as we hear of Christ as our King. <clears throat> The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters. Mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. <clears throat> you know, as, as I read this, for whatever reason, my attention was drawn to a, one of the, the books of the Lord of the Rings, and uh, the last one, uh, The Return of the King. And it, it's drawn there as uh, the finale, if you saw the, the movie version, uh, has uh, the king uh, robed in splendor and crowned, and a celebration is taking place, and life is kind of renewed to the land, and everything is beautiful and glorious. We're... Prior to that, everything was plagued by war, by violence, by bloodshed. And so now is a culmination of this coronation and uh, the joy of all the peoples of uh, the Shire um, and you know, celebrating this victory. Um, and I think it's important that we get that kind of image in our mind as, as we hear this psalm. And especially as we think about Christ as our King and the culmination of the church here. Because it's Christ returning as our King that should be on our minds. Christ returning as King, descending from his throne and bringing an end to life in this world and taking us to the new heaven and the new earth that he has prepared for us. So when we hear the first words of Psalm 93, that should be the thoughts. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. I also think of the image that you know we're given in Isaiah chapter 6, where the train of God's robe fills the temple. And uh, as, as we see that, you know, this is God's glory. This is his majesty. And his glory, his majesty is, is also seen in the things that he's created and the, the gifts that he has given us in, in creation. But that will pale in comparison to what lies ahead. The glory and majesty of our God is his victorious return. His victorious return to make all things right. His victorious return to take his own to be with him in eternity. And his victorious return, you know, putting all his enemies under his feet. You know, this is the image that we're getting here in the beginning of this psalm. But, you know, the comparison then is, is to mighty waters. And we can see the, the power of the things that waters do. Power in, in rushing rivers, power in uh, surging waves of, of the ocean and seas, power in all of those things that we see when the storm comes up, what kind of great devastation, you know, a hurricane or tsunami or a typhoon can cause. And uh, as we think about that, God is greater in might than 
anything that those mighty waters could throw at us. And that's the point. God is mightier than the devil. God is mightier than this world. God is mightier than sin. God is mightier than all of the forces of evil that could come against us. And so that might and that glory and that majesty will be shown on his return. And that's where our hope comes from. Our hope comes from knowing that there is a day awaiting, that everything will be made right, and that we can be certain of that. As we think about God as our king, we think about him not only as our victorious king, but also the one who will be our conquering king, the com king that makes everything completely under his, under his feet. As we live in a world that is filled with so much turmoil and, and so many forces of evil surrounding us and attacking us, to have relief from that is something we all long for. And so that's what we should find as we think of Christ as king. He is in control. Above everything else, he is in control. Just like he calmed the storm as, he watched, as the disciples watched, so he will calm all things and give us the joyous life everlasting and his peace forevermore. In his name, amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we praise and we glorify your holy name as, as king. Your majesty is beyond measure. And we ask that you would help us to remember you as our king, that you are in control and have control over all things. And even when mighty rushing waters you know, roll, we remember that Jesus calmed the storm and made it completely calm. And you will come again to do that very thing. Uh, the storm of the political storms, the morality storms, the uh, persecution storms, these you will all calm and put to rest. Your justice will prevail and you will give us life with you forever. Strengthen us with the comfort that your presence in your glory and majesty bring us the certainty of your power, and the certainty of your mercy and grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed Monday, and we pray that we uh, see you tomorrow on Tuesday for tomorrow's devotion. Have a beautiful and blessed day.